Hello everybody, my name is Eric. Firefox built its reputation as the browser you turn to when you don't trust Chrome with your data. But now Firefox has just updated its terms of service and many users are very concerned. Has Mozilla quietly granted itself permission to use your personal data however it likes? Has the privacy browser finally turned into the more spyware than Chrome browser? That's what we're going to be looking at today. So here we go, we got Firefox, of course. And we can see the about page, which is where a lot of this uh, came to be troubled. So Firefox has not been having a good couple of years. Let's be real. Uh, market share has been down. And a problem that many people have noticed when they actually try to use it now is that a lot of websites either explicitly don't support Firefox or they just don't work very well. Uh, the point for me of no return, not that I even use Reddit that much, but I remember when Reddit went from the old to the new layout, and suddenly it doesn't, it just took five times as long on Firefox as it did on Chrome, and I just thought, you know, there isn't a lot, it's too much. I still use it for some things, and I've always understood and respected the idea that it is a, it's good to have some diversity in the browser ecosystem. Firefox also took a big blow, and I actually thought about making a video about this a while ago, when an antitrust court blocked Google from paying to be the default search engine. In Firefox, you may think that's great because you don't like Google. The bad thing here is that's Firefox's only money. That's literally, basically the only way to make money off of uh, web browsing, right? Not great for Firefox. I, I don't know exactly what's going on with that. And of course, the new administration, which doesn't seem to be interested in the antitrust cases of the previous administration, could change all of that. They've been having trouble. And as a result, some people are very concerned with the latest uh, change to the FAQ. First of all, let's look at what the FAQ looked like before this change. In great tool, archive.org, the Wayback Machine. It's completely free. How do I get the Firefox browser? Is Firefox free? Yeah, it's free. This is like SEO spam, basically, because you think they might point out that free software and free of challenge is different, because Chrome is also free to download, but it is not free software, and a lot of people do care about that. No. Now this is what's gone. So, does Firefox sell your personal data? Nope, never have, never will, and we protect you from many of the advertisers who do. Firefox products are designed to protect your privacy. That's a promise. What do we have now? Entirely gone. Everything else is still here. Again, they point out you can change your search engine, and this is mostly uh, an SEO page where, because Google has that FAQ thing where they'll include your website. That's mostly what this is. But a very, a very interesting uh, thing was just dumped. Now, if we go through to the Firefox uh, privacy promise, uh, we can still see that, and this all mostly looks the part. What do we mean by personal information? Your name, email address, or billing information, including your IP address, will always tell you what we're collecting. Well, that's good. Now, here is where the big controversy comes in. So there is a thing that they've just added called Terms of Use, which mostly for software, like free software, is pretty uncommon. And there's a lot of bad things in here. So Mozilla gives you certain rights and permissions. Okay open source software, uh, although the trademark guidelines, uh, so that's interesting. So this list of terms that most people would say violate free software guidelines do not apply if you compile it yourself, or if you say, you know what, I don't like any of this, I'm going to use LibreWolf instead, which is based on the same source code, great, you can still do that. Mozilla's intellectual property. Okay, fair enough. I don't I don't care. I, I think their trademark policy is perfectly reasonable. Uh, as to the extent that they want to make sure if you're downloading Firefox that it is Firefox. Now here's what people don't like. You give Mozilla certain rights and permissions. Now this has already been modified a bit from the hated version of this, but I, I still don't really like it. You give Mozilla the rights necessary to operate Firefox. This includes processing your data as we describe in the Firefox privacy notice. It also includes a non-exclusive, royalty-free, worldwide license for the purpose of doing as you request with the content you input in Firefox. This does not give Mozilla any rights to this content. And that's correct. And for those of you who are not familiar with copyright and licensing law, non-exclusive means Mozilla does not own anything I type into Firefox. Okay, that's good, but usage rights are still a 
the, the wording here is confusing. Now, I did look around. People online seem to be mixed. Most people are very upset about this. Some people are saying, well, this is needed to operate a service. And I would agree on anything else. Like, obviously, if you're going on Blue Sky, they're going to have this in their terms of service because you're giving them content to distribute. That makes sense. The thing about browsers is a software that runs on your computer, as far as I know, does not require a terms of service like this. It would have the ones about, of course, if they're sending data over the internet to Mozilla servers, and a service where, like, for example, ChatGPT, which I'm putting something in, getting something out, also has that kind of a terms of service. That makes sense to me, but why does Mozilla need this? Now, this looks very limited in scope, and more limited than the original version. The original version, I'll find that. Now this is really concerning. Most people, this reads as anything I upload in Firefox, Mozilla has the right uh, to use as they please. The other thing people didn't really like here was this acceptable... Oh, that seems to be... I think that's also been... Now this one is reasonable, and this is the new one. So they have walked this back a bit. Uh, the, the previous one had some pretty blatant things. You know, this one makes sense. Exclusively this one. Don't violate the law. Okay. Uh, what does that even mean? Uh, does that mean if you if you type a mean comment on this video using Firefox, uh, Mozilla is not going to be happy about it? Uh, okay. Th these are all illegal. Most of these are illegal, but deceive and mislead is a bit illegal. Mostly illegal. 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 Now, this one was hugely controversial because it's not illegal. Maybe you could say it is uh, unethical, but I, I, I mean, I got to be careful what I can say on YouTube, but this one is going to be a pretty, like, a lot of people are going to be uh, breaking that term. Uh, collect, collect or harvest, uh, personally identify. Yeah, fine, fine. Okay, of others, and violate a person's rights to privacy and publicity. It's really, the, the problem, like, these are civil issues. If, if you use Firefox to infringe my copyright, that is between you and I. It's not, not it, this seems very big brother. And that is why people are upset. Now, they did walk that one back, luckily. I mean, now it's much more clear that I am responsible for anything I do with Firefox, which is fine, uh, but that Mozilla is not going to give me a long list of uh, trouble, and then they go on to say, yes, no, fair enough. I'm not going to claim Mozilla is responsible for what I did with Firefox. This is fine, and I think a part of the justification for this, probably there have been an increasing amount of poorly thought out software liability laws, so maybe that's related, and once again, that's pretty normal. And of course, because they're based in California, the supplies in California. Now, one of the most vocal critics of this was Brendan Eich, the creator of Brave and former board member of Mozilla. I believe there was a, a, a political reason. Uh, he, he, so there is some beef between him and uh, Mozilla, but he makes the point that I think makes sense that a browser does not need this kind of a terms of service. We can go try and find Braves. So they've kind of got the same thing going on here. But there is no grant of rights. And that was the biggest uh, concern, but they do have a similar a AUP, but no no uh, granting of rights here. Let's look at Chrome. Because there was actually, many years ago, a controversy over Chrome's terms of service. And that was, in fact, because Google had and briefly used their main terms of service, which, of course, is mostly for an interactive online service. I'm just going to make sure that we're on the United States version. Uh, that did include some unwanted things. So we agree. Okay, and this is just a codec license, although it does go to the Google Terms of Service, which I'm apparently agreeing to, which does contain quite a lot of things. Now, okay. So if my content is protected, okay. And that's that. But this one is at least clearer on what's being, what's happening. So... I think this is still, even with the uh, changes, not a great move on uh, Mozilla's part. I also think, uh, to some degree, the notion of Mozilla Firefox being the privacy browser is a bit overblown. I tested uh, Ubuntu for spyware uh, about a year ago, and I found that of all the programs that come by default, uh, Mozilla ha Firefox had by far the most telemetry with a similar amount as Chrome. 
Now, of course, given that it's not owned by Google, you may think there's a conflict of interest there and some extensions are restricted. But overall, I don't see this as a big win. So luckily, because Firefox is free and open source software, there are plenty of functionally identical alternatives in addition to different browsers you can use. So LibreWolf is simply a reskin of Firefox that avoids the trademarks, gets rid of the telemetry, and functions exactly the same with some built-in additional features, and the default privacy settings are slightly different. But it's an easy switch. Uh, it's not affiliated with Mozilla, you can see the source code, and we can see the license for this. Licensed under the same license as Firefox. Also documents. That's very straightforward, I'm not going to spend too much time on it, because if you use Firefox, easy. The other Gecko-based browser that's worth a look is Zen Browser, and this has taken off in the tech community because there was a popular browser, it was closed source and basically Mac only called Arc Browser, but a lot of people liked the user interface. Well, Zen Browser brings that user interface, but to Gecko. Similarly, has little telemetry and functions just like Arc Browser. So if you like this design or were ever curious about Arc Browser but never used it, uh, here you go. Now, if you're tired of Gecko and maybe want to go to Chromium or Blink, well, then you've got then the world is your oyster because you've got everything. You've got Microsoft Edge. You've got Google Chrome. Of course, you've got ungoogled Chromium, which is simply Google Chrome, but with all of the Google features stripped out. It looks the same as Google Chrome, runs everything that Google Chrome does, but you can't sync your Google account if that's something that you like. Personally, I use regular Google Chrome. A lot of people don't uh, don't like the privacy implications of that. Then you also have other Chromium derivatives, Arc Browser, which seems to be dying but still kind of exists, and Brave Browser which some people like, uh, and I guess I should mention Opera GX and Opera in general as well. Uh, Brave and Opera are similar in the sense that they both come with built-in ad blockers, not that you can't install them on any browser you want. Uh, and they uh, and Brave also has some crypto features. Uh, I, I think you can also, if you want to, you can allow ads and get some of the revenue with Brave. I haven't used it that much, but and then Opera... It's just, it, it's another Chromium derivative. Uh, it was originally really built around speed, but that may have changed a bit. This one isn't open source. Just, just a warning. Uh, I don't think it's that bad, but some people don't like it because it's not open source. It's not really obvious how they're making money. And they certainly have gone to great lengths to market Opera GX, especially the browser for gaming. I believe that one also comes with some features to limit the browser's usability, uh, or not use resource usage when you're gaming, which you might find interesting. So that is going to be all for this video and all for me for now. Do you find this Firefox terms of service change concerning? Are you going to switch browser if you were using Firefox? Most people already weren't. And do you have a preferred browser? That's going to be all for me for now. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Bye.